If you're lacking, you are in need, you're struggling always, maybe there's something to do with your thinking. So stop blaming everybody around you. Stop blaming even the devil because God, Jesus has dealt with the devil. And start focusing on what you think because what you think establishes your belief system. And your thinking is induced by what you hear. So if you're among people that are always lacking, that are always financially struggling, always finding it difficult to, meet, uh, to make ends meet, always living in debt, then obviously there is a mindset that they have. And that mindset has kept them captive. And there, unless you break loose of that captivity in the mind, you're not going to come out of it. So it's not blaming others and not trying to harass your wife because she didn't bring a dowry. Come on, am I talking to you? I said, am I talking to you? All right, so don't harass anybody and don't blame nobody, okay? Because you as an individual have to take responsibility and I'm trying to make you understand that maybe your thinking is warped. Your thinking is rotten. It's not according to God's word. Hallelujah. Remember, and I'm going to make reference to this. The Lord says, if I meditate on the word of God day and night, I will make my way prosperous and I will have good success. Meditation, I'm going away ahead of myself, but I will refer to that again. Meditation is supposed to impact your and affect your thinking. Come on. So there is something. That's why he said, if you want to enjoy the blessing of the kingdom of God, you have to repent, which means you have to break loose and turn away from the wrong way of thinking. That religion will help you. A particular religious methodology will help you. No, what you need is the gospel, which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Right? And what he teaches. So there are many thought patterns we've been, which have been established in our thinking, which need, may not necessarily be in agreement with what God is saying. But if you want to enjoy what God has promised, then the thing you got to do is work on your thinking. Hallelujah. I said, you've got to work on your thinking. That's why it says repent. That means you have to realize my way of thinking, my mindset is wrong. It is not getting me out of helping me to get out of this situation. And I desire to get out. So the desire factor is the first thing. When the prodigal son desired to get out of the pig's pen, that's when he came to his realization, hey, this is not where I'm supposed to be. So I'm going to get up and go. So when that happens, when you want to break loose from that poverty mindset, when you want to get break loose of that lack in your life, and you say, I'm going to do something about it, and you start taking action, something good is about to happen. Why? Because now you're working on realigning your thinking to line up with God's Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. See, this is why when you want to go to your next level, you can never go to your next level by maintaining the status quo, which means whatever you're doing, the same thing you continue to do. Whatever you, the way you've been living, the same thing. The way you've been spending time, there is no change. You will never go to your next level. That's why daily routines are very important. Now, if I want to go to my next level, maybe there has to be some change where I increase my time in the Word. My, I may increase my time in reading certain kinds of books that will impact my life, my profession. So I need to take intentional action to bring about the change because I'm fed up with where I am at. Somebody talk to me. So unless you're fed up with where you are, as a first step, nothing is going to happen. If you're happy and you're satisfied where you're at and you're just hoping that I will go to your next level, it's never going to happen. Hope will never get you there. Faith will get you there. But faith is action. Come on, talk to me somebody. All right? So both riches and poverty are the product or the offspring of thought. Now, something else that I said, you don't receive what you want, you receive what you believe. Hallelujah. There are many people 
that want to live a life free of financial stress. They want it. But they cannot believe it is possible. It will never happen. You have to be convinced from the word of God it can happen. And when you act according to what God instructs, then it shall happen. Say Amen. Okay, you cannot have, this is what Joyce Myers once said. She said, you cannot have a positive life with a negative mind. You cannot have a positive life with a negative mind. Start dealing with your negative mind or the negative mindset. Amen? Because the negative mindset, listen, the mindset you now have, that means the way and pattern of thinking did not come overnight. That's how you've been shaped all your life. So it's going to resist. This is the reason why the Bible says it's called a stronghold. A stronghold is a fortress. Now a fortress cannot be broken by just shooting one arrow. It needs a lot of power to break it down. And the Bible talks about the weapons of warfare that are not carnal, that can pull down the strongholds of the devil. See, you need the Word of God to deal with the stronghold of a negative mindset. See, the way you're acting in life is because of a pattern of or a system of thinking you have. If you, that has to change, because it's become a stronghold, you do several things without even realizing without even thinking about it. Why? It has become a system of operation for you. Now, that is a stronghold. There are good strongholds and there are bad strongholds. We're dealing with a negative, bad strongholds. Now, the word is designed, if you will apply it in the right way, to break down the strongholds and pull down the strongholds and establish the good strongholds which are in line with God's word. Say Amen. Alright? Am I making myself clear to you all? Are you getting this? All right. You cannot have a positive mind, positive life with a negative mindset. That's why Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says what? As a man thinketh where? In his heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Therefore, your thinking has to be word dependent. Your thinking has to be based on the word of God. It is, it has to be uh, impacted by the word, of, the thinking has to be induced and impacted by the word of God. Hallelujah. And it has to be brought into alignment with God's word. So, my job is not to worry about the other person. My job is not to blame other people, but to begin to realize it's my responsibility. And God is giving us the cue, He's giving us the solution, He's showing us the path as to how it can be done. This is where we began to read from Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Because remember, once you're born again, the, the Bible requires, or the Lord requires, that we be transformed more into His image to become like Jesus. And that happens through the renewal of the mind. Okay? So the tool for renewal is God's Word. Not what the most famous movie star is saying. Not what the most famous sportsman is saying. Not what the most famous um, whatever, you know, or the most wealthiest man in the world is saying. No. The Word is the one that should renew, should be the tool that renews our mind. Why? Because the Word is what is God's way of thinking. And so I'm working on changing my way of thinking to come into alignment with God's way of thinking. Say amen. amen. All right, so very quickly, Romans chapter 12. Okay. Romans chapter 12, verse um, 2 says, Be transformed by the renewing of the mind. It's a renewing of the mind that causes transformation. The renewing of the mind causes transformation. As important as prayer is, reading, studying, meditating of the Word is also important. Watch this. 
if your mind is not renewed according to the word of God, your prayers will also be more carnal or more emotional and not according to the word. So the word, when it begins to influence your thinking, establishing a new belief system, your prayer life will begin to change as well. Hallelujah. So both the word and prayer are equally important. I'm reading from another translation which says this, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Child of God, in the kingdom of God, you live from inside out. Why? Because the kingdom is within you. Luke chapter 17 verse 21 says, um, the kingdom of God is within you. Where is it? Come on, say within me. Okay, now, James chapter 1 verse 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. And remember what I said? The mind is a part of the soul. Say amen. amen. Say this with me. The mind is a part of my soul. So the New Living Translation reads like this. So get rid of all the filth and evil in, our, in your lives and humbly accept the word of God, the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. I want to go slow here. He said, get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives. The moment we read that, filth and evil, we immediately think of sinful actions that are enlisted in Galatians chapter 5. All right? Like, um, you know, robbery, stealing, lying, debauchery, fornication, all these kind of things. Those things is what we think. And that is true. But it is not limited to it. This is where I believe we're missing it. Because all that one Galatians chapter 5 talks about, all those sinful actions are involved in the filthy and evil that the Bible is talking about. But it is not limited to it. Because you've got to understand what evil means according to God's word. It encompasses all those things that are enlisted in Galatians. But let me go further and show you something else. Now, if you read in Numbers chapter 13, look at what the Bible says. When the, the, when the spies came back and spoke to Moses about and gave a report about the land, 10 of them said this, and they brought up an evil report. Everybody say evil report. Now, this evil report was not filthy language. It was not abusive language. It was not cuss language. How many know what I'm talking about, right? They were not talking filthy language. They were not abusing people with filth. No, none of that. But yet, it is called an evil report. Now, this is very important for us to understand, please. So he calls it evil report of the land, which they had searched out unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Now, let me also read it from another version. It says, So they spread this bad report. They spread the bad report of the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. And all the people was, we saw were huge. Now remember church. What these people were saying was factually correct. And yet God calls it an evil report. See so many times we think what is wrong? I'm, all I'm talking about is facts. Okay. All I'm saying is, hey, I'm not fabricating anything. I'm telling you, and they use the word truth. But I'm not using the word truth because only what God says is truth. Amen. Not what you feel, not what you see, not what you hear. Because all that is subject to change. The truth is unchangeable. Facts are changeable. That's why the Bible says, that which we see with our natural eye is what? Temporal, which means temporary. But that which we cannot see is eternal. And when God speaks, He speaks from the eternal point of view. He does not speak based on the factual existence of whatever that is. But when we speak, we speak based on facts. Based on what our five senses are able to pick up. Say amen if you understand what I'm saying. All right. So we, these people were giving a factual report of what they saw, but they added some things to it. They said this. We traveled through and explored 
this land and um, it will devour anyone who goes to live there. That's not a fact. That's their conclusion. That's a report called analysis. How many know what I'm talking about? Now, see, when they said they were men of great stature, it's a fact. When they said the cities are walled, that's a fact. When they said they're giants, that's a fact. But then they go further to say, but whoever goes there is going to die, and all the people that we saw are huge, and that's a fact. Okay? Now, this is an assessment based on the unrenewed mind. Any person would have drawn the same conclusion as these people. Anybody. See, you and I, as born-again believers, do not have the luxury to analyze as the world analyzes and speak like they speak and expect God to bless us. How many know what I'm talking about? So you cannot. See, we are not taught or I'm not teaching you to deny the facts. But don't analyze the facts to draw a conclusion based on your senses. I think there is resistance this morning. You're not receiving what I'm saying. That's what I'm sensing, you know. Uh, somebody is not getting at this. So please open your hearts and listen carefully. I'm not teaching you to deny the facts. I'm not telling you when the, when the thermometer registers 105 degrees, I'm not teaching you, I don't have fever. I don't have fever. That's not faith. That's denial. It's a fact. But see, 105, so he's going to die. That's analysis. Are you with me? And that is wrong. Stop. After you say the regis it's registered 105 degrees, don't say another word. Now speak God's word. By his stripes he shall be made whole. Amen. Only if your mind is renewed. Watch this. What, whatever fact comes through is filtered through your mind. And is, and is expressed through the faith, um, you know, your belief system. So whatever your, your heart believes is what will come out of your mouth based on the analysis of your renewed mind. Hello? I said, hello? They said, if we go there, anybody that goes there is going to die. We cannot live there. That's an analysis based on the unrenewed mind that, is not, that has not been influenced by God's word. Say amen. amen. That has not been impacted by God's word. But the two others, J Caleb and Joshua said, Hey, we can go right now and we can overcome them if God is for us. Look at this. The analysis is different. The facts remain the same. How did this analysis come about? By the kind of mindset that they had. The Bible says about Caleb that his heart was after God. Hallelujah. That means his whole mindset, his heart was impacted by the reality and the truth of God. And that he was now convinced that whatever God promised, God is able to perform it. What, did, what does the Bible say about Abraham? He was fully persuaded that he who promised is well able to perform it. The unrenewed mind's analysis was, you are too old, you cannot have a child. True. The fact is they were barren. The fact is there was something not right in their body. That's why they could not have kids. That's a fact. But the analysis in the natural is they will not have children now. They've gone past the age. But the renewed mind said, no, my thinking has been impacted by God's word. And so I believe in what God says. See, now watch this. You have to let the word impact, in, induce your mind, impact your mind to the degree that it changes your belief system. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you talk now, when you speak forth, you not only declare, hey, you not only declare the fact, but your analysis 
is also declared. The analysis you declare is either doubt or faith. Hello. Hello. Amen. He has COVID. He's in the fourth stage. Okay. So, his uncle died. His friend died. His aunt died. His sister died. So, what are you going to say? It's a fact. All those are facts. But what are you going to say about it now? See, if your mind is renewed with the word of God, and your faith has been impacted, you will say, in spite of all those experiences. I don't know why that happened, and I don't need to know. I am going to open my mouth and say, I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. I am going to declare, I was healed by his stripes. I'm going to declare that I am the healed of the Lord. That's my analysis. Based on what? Based on the word. But the word, now listen. If, you're, if your mind is not renewed, and your heart is not impacted, you'll be trying to make yourself say that. But if the impact has been completed, without even realizing, you will say that. Because now, it's a different processor inside you. Hallelujah. It's being processed through a different processor. This processor is called the renewed mind. The old processor was called the unrenewed mind. Say amen somewhere. Amen. So these guys gave you factual reports, and I'm going to take you from there. Where am I? <clears throat> okay. So why did God call it an evil report? Let's look at that. 